Hey there. Um, oh. Okay, Adriana, I know, um, could the other two people identify themselves for our records? speaking. Hi, Liz. How are you? Good. Yourself? Not too shabby. I like your plants in the back. I meant one to see. <laughs> I, have a green I like green in the house. <laughs> like you like birds. back at work one day and I'm already exhausted. <laughs> Happy New Year, everyone. Oh, hi, Pat. Hello there. Um, I emailed you uh, about that CIS. Yeah. Um, um, and then I circulated it because my email wasn't sending stuff. Um, yeah, um, I, I haven't heard back from anyone else about it. Um, the interesting thing is Encino Neighborhood Council already had done a CIS on that. It was much less strong. It was about a year ago. Um, I would like to do it again, and I, I really, um, you know, and not so much to do with budget advocates, but everything else, um, we really, really need uh, a memorandum of understanding with Breck and Parks, because I there are so many diverse situations from kids' playgrounds that are needed to just open space that's needed with grassy areas to wildlife areas. They can't handle it. And I, think, and, um, I mean, I, I don't know how much you know about what happened in Griffith Park when they were trying to um, basically take away some of the, the, the green areas to um, have more formalized playing fields. Where was this? Griffith Park. Yeah, it's the same thing every place. They they keep wanted, wanting to take like part of Tapia's agricultural area in the basin for soccer fields. We've got enough soccer fields. We need areas where people can just go out and walk and enjoy nature. I mean, enough already. Yeah, I think one thing is... here. Here's my cons co-conspirator. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing that I, I know... Um, is an issue. So um, I think there should be an addendum to the CIS explaining how to do it is that if you don't explain how to um, indicate um, that you are either for or against, I think, with changes, the city council tends to twist it to their own intent. We had the situation with the billboards a few years ago uh -huh. where a lot of us opposed uh we, we supported one element of it which was basically keep it as it is and so we sent it in uh, in support of of uh, number b mm -hmm. and um 
And then when it was read out, they had rewritten the council file and they had us all in support of uh, expanding it and the LED, you know, the lights and everything else. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see your point totally. Yeah. So we will. Uh, that's I think CIS can say, but I think there needs there. to be additional information to circulate on yeah. how to do it. Hi, Glenn. Hello. Happy New Year, Glenn. Same to you. 2021, we made it. Baruch Hashem. <laughs> hey, Pat, on your, uh, I assume it was yours because you had um, sent it out before Liz had. Yeah. Uh, the, on the list of parks, my I, my only recommendation is that we include Elysian Park. It's um, it's had uh, natural resource issues over the years. Yes. And it does have an active, um, active uh, uh, advocacy group. OK. So that would be a request. Mm -hmm. um, uh, hopefully a friendly amendment just to add that to the list of parks. Oh, no, please. Uh, you know, the, the, the thing is definitely in draft status. I want input, and I just got some from Liz. Um, and I need to start working on some uh, discussion points for an MOU. But I, I really think it's, it's long overdue. And um, maybe uh, we could confer sometime later in the week and, and kind of fine tune it a little bit. Um, I don't remember a list of parks, but there is Debs Park in there. Yeah, yes. I mentioned Debs. And also, I think, is it the Bologna Wetlands? Um, I will add, that's our area, isn't it? There, yeah, there's just, um, they're just going ahead now with the wetland restoration. There was an article in the Times, uh, was it today about it? Pat, I think the, I had no problems with the, I mean, the the narrative was fine with me. As far as an, as far as an MOU, I would recommend that perhaps looking at the DWP MOU with neighborhood councils. I have and then, that. I, okay. I will model it after that. I mean, but the, the circumstances... Wait, there's one more. There's okay. one more. We had a draft MOU with LA Department of Transportation that got uh, almost finalized and then and then um, uh, scuttled. So, but um, those two are, are ones in existing plus almost ready to be signed. Okay. Are good models, I think. Okay, good. Work from. I I just I'd welcome any help putting this together, but I think it's really important because I I think the the communities have been run over, and they they need a voice in this. Hi. Lee. I came. Hi. Oh, is there an um, a an agenda for your neighborhood council meeting? I have I have one. I don't I don't know what she's done or how she's posted. I can forward it to you if you like. That would be great, yeah, because it's, I mean, there, the agendas are in folders and there isn't one for 2021 yet. At least when I looked this morning. Hey, Leslie. Hello, hello.
Evening, Seth. Hello. a few more minutes because we haven't formed yet. I'm assuming that Susan is Jack. Yep. Uh, it was at, at length, so I would recommend renaming. Daniel. Hello. Hey, KJ, how, good to see you. Hey, Liz, happy new year. Same to you, may 2021 be an improvement over the last one. <laughs> Let the church say amen to that. <laughs> <laughs> My sister's been emailing me, um, uh, stay positive, uh, test negative. Uh, that's about the right speed. I like your sister's messaging. Hey, Brian. Hey, hey, um, Howard. Okay. Um, Happy New Year, Liz. Yep. Um, Good evening. I think we're getting close to a quorum, so... I, I've got 14. Elspeth, if you can start with the... Um, a roll call, please. Sure. All right. Lenaira Murphy. Absent. Okay. Brian Allen. Here. Glenn Bailey. Glenn here. Gary Fordyce. Gary here. Carol Newman. Yo. Lee Blumenfeld. Thought I saw you. Here. Thank you. Pat Bates. Pat here. Peter Head of Line. He has stepped down. Oh, thank you. How would Pleased to say I'm here and good to see you all. 
Brandon Pender. Excused. Thank you. Jack Humphreyville. I see you, Jack. Here. Julia Moser. Excused. Thanks. Daniel Perez. Present. Ernesto Castro. Nara Haratunian. Margarita Lopez. Uh, absent. Thank you. Barbara Ringett. Uh, I, she's excused. Thanks. Seth Copenhaver. Present. Jamie Tiarino. I think she said she was going to be absent. I'll have to confirm that. Okay. Liz Amston. I'm here. All right. Clint Burt's on. Elias Garcia. Here. Leslie Gamero. Here, happy new year. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer Goody. Here. Edmund Warren. Hugo Rodriguez. Jay Handel. Excused. Thank you. John Lieberman. Danielle Sandoval. And Gina Martinez. Uh, excused. Okay. All right. Anybody who is here on that list who I did not call? I think oh, John nice. just John just entered. Yes, thank you. Okay. I see John Lieberman there. And all right. And I see a lot of guests. Um, and so can we go around and have people introduce themselves with their neighborhood councils? Uh, or Glenn, is there a way that you'd like to do it? Well, Liz, Liz um, is okay. running. I, I think, uh, you know, we, we introduce the um, budget representatives and then the, the you know, non-budget reps. Yeah, I think that can the budget representatives speak up um, one at a time? Perhaps they can, since there's so many, raise their hand. Budget representatives, please raise your hand on the button on the um, right. If you just call on us, it's going to be easier. Yeah. Do I have who I have as budget reps uh, at this point are Jason Hector, K, and KJ. Uh, is there anybody else who's a budget representative? Edmund Warren just logged in. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. At this point, I think we just assume. Liz, uh, Jamie Penn for Wilshire Center, Koreatown. Okay. Uh, has Dave. a raised hand. Okay. Oh, I see. Sorry, Mike. Um, Jamie, are you a 
Liz, why don't we just go on with the meeting? There's people here, but we don't have a system for calling who, who, who they yeah. are. Okay. Um, anyways, great to see you all. Um, so many visitors. We're now halfway through the year. And um, and we're doing actually we're actually doing pretty well. Um, we've had four papers so far published. Um, we had four CIS circulated, and are now being posted to the website. There are five more papers I'm aware of in various stages. More coming. I hope so. Um, and from based on. But a few people said at the very end of the LANC meeting on Saturday, we heard that United Neighborhoods get the budget advocate reports. Thanks, Hugo. Also, West Hills, Porter Ranch, and Granada Hill South. Thanks to every budget advocate and everyone who does their reports. It really does help. Um, we'll now move to um, public comment. Um, first, for budget reps, um, we'll go with we'll go with Kay first. Hi, this is Kay Hartman from Palms, and I just want to um, make everybody aware that the uh, North Westwood um, Neighborhood Council, um, in collaboration with Palms, is putting on <clears throat> putting on a budget hall, budget town hall this Saturday from one to three. Uh, Jacob Wexler will be speaking, and then there is a panel discussion. I am on the panel. Um, and I did send the flyer to the co-chairs and to Julia Moser. So um, if you're interested in attending and you don't have it from one of them or haven't seen it, let me know. I'll be happy to share it with you. It's on the Budget Advocate uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Cool. Thank you. I haven't seen it, but great. Uh, okay, and um, Jason Hector. Hello, everybody. Happy New Year. And um, I, I don't know, are you going to be talking about the MOU on the agenda later with Rex and Parks? Or is... Yes, that will come up. Okay, so um, I'd like to talk about MOUs in general um, with perhaps urban forestry is one of the most underfunded departments, but we do have um, kind of the most need in um, the North Valley in particular. So one of the things that would be nice is if there was a way that we had, let's say a set fee. So if a neighborhood council wanted to remove a tree or remove a stump, then there could be a way that they could either hire the city or an outside contractor, um, but that MOU in place would allow it to be done much easier. Um, you know, we, getting those projects done are very uh, long and, and tedious. It takes like six months to get our something done. But if there was an MOU in place, the neighborhood council could approve funding to do different things like that. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about recs and parks when we get to that. But I, I think that's a very important idea. And um, I appreciate all the work that uh, has been done on that. By the committee. Yeah, I think there's been stuff in the past on that, and I'll look up the notes and see if we can connect you up. Um, Jamie Penn. Hello, um, Wilshire Center, Koreatown Neighborhood Council. I'm not sure we have a liaison for this committee. Um, I'm on the budget committee, uh, but I'm not uh, our acting chair, so I'm not sure uh, what the process is for that. I can flag our general board to approve a liaison, if that's the official process? Mm -hmm. Either, it depends on your um, bylaws, uh, either elect or appoint a budget, and you can have two budget reps, and they, do, they can be board members, but they can also be stakeholders. Okay, wonderful. Um, I'll bring that up to our um, executive committee so they can get it on our, our next decision. Uh, Thank you. Anybody, any stakeholder comments? like to make uh, just a brief comment, Liz, if I may, Adriana Dela Cruz. I want to say thank you very much to the budget advocates to att uh, who attended last month's uh, city council meeting in regards to the street amenities furniture program. Thanks for participating and, and, and giving feedback on there. Thank you, Adriana. Anybody, any other stakeholders?
Okay, that being said, we'll move on. Uh, next item is a motion to approve the minutes. Since we don't, haven't circulated the minutes, that item is postponed until the next meeting. Next item is payments from the budget advocates account. Um, the item is postponed because Lenaira is not here, but I did hear back from Christina that she has not been paid. Um, and that is a concern. I've emailed Lenaira to follow up immediately with Don as because we were told five or six weeks ago that everything but City Watch and one reimbursement had been paid. Um, Next item was approved financial. Uh, Liz, Liz, sorry, I raised my hand. Oh. Just, just, to, just so that everyone knows, just to clarify that Christina is our webmaster. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, next item was the approval of the financial report with Lenara not here. That's postponed until after the budget advocates, finance budget and finance committee can meet and um, a, the next. Uh, financial report be prepared um, before our meeting on the 16th. I think it is. Um, progress of committees. I had some good feedback from people over the break. Um, we still need papers, as I mentioned. Um, and for people to be aware that what happened with Peter's paper and before that with the one I did on People's Budget Los Angeles, um, that was due to a number of factors. Um, we had issues with facts and opinions needing to be kept separate. And secondly, although not everybody will agree with everybody's opinion, um, that, that is why we have a two-step process of approval by the committee and then the executive committee. And even if the committee does not approve, the person who wrote it may come directly to the executive committee for consideration. Um, the... We can't turn down material because we disagree with conclusions, but the contents need to be accurate and needs to reflect the values of the budget advocates as a whole, um, such as we cannot do something that is not in the best fiscal interest of the city. Um, you know, so anything where funds come from and what city is obliged to spend money on is important. Um, and any committee um, that is uncertain of its path, please contact Jack or myself. And if we can't help you, we'll find someone who can. Um, uh, we have a hand raised from Jarrett. Go ahead, Jarrett. Hi, I, I'm, I'm very sorry. I was trying to get public comment and it was a little bit confusing. Okay, go ahead. Oh yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just a little bit um, curious as to um, why there's nothing on this agenda about um, a budget advocate's um, suggestion to cancel rent. Um, the moratorium, you know, uh, lots of people are on the fringe here um, worrying about whether they're going to be able to stay in their homes. And um, I thought it would be pretty important for you guys to be discussing something that consequential. Um, as you guys know, there are the large majority of, of people who live in Los Angeles are renters. And um, it feels like oftentimes with neighborhood council business, um, their perspective is just completely thrown out the door. And it's mostly just homeowners who are making decisions on this. So I would really hope to see you guys um, champion that cause because things are not looking good. So yeah. thank you. I yield my time. I agree with you, Jarrett. Um, however, um, the city doesn't pay the rent. Some money has been coming, has come out of the CARES money. Um, so at least we, we can add things to the agenda. You're welcome to email us, uh, but it needs to be phrased in a way that deals with the city budget. So if you can look, think about it, look at it, um, and we certainly appreciate um, something that we can add to the agenda. Um, Austin? Hi, yes. Um, I just wanted to make a quick uh, comment about how uh, I hoped as we discussed the people's budget, there is, um, we raised the issue of how to further fund our unhoused neighbors um, during this COVID time. Um, 
four people are dying a day on the streets and we have the capabilities to move funds around to be able to house these individuals. Um, it's absolutely a shame that instead that money is going towards care plus sweeps that are blocking real care from happening and um, putting so many people's lives further at risk during this absolutely tragic moment in time. So I hope that we're able to discuss that further. I hope to hear you guys champion not only the voices of our homeowners in this city, but everyone. Um, and that's all I have to say right now. I yield my time. Austin, you may want to get in touch with Barbara uh, Ringette, who's not in the meeting tonight, but uh, she chairs a committee on homelessness. And I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, you can reach her on our website. There's a link um, that will take, uh, you can send an email. Awesome. Um, Thank Zoe. you. Zoe? Not hearing Joey speaking, uh, Gina. Sorry, I didn't hear you the, the first Sorry. time. Yeah, I mean, I would um, like to echo sort of both of the previous two commenters. I think they made wonderful points um, and would also, you know, per my wonderful graphic up here, um, you know, with what Jared was saying, we, we have money within the city budget. It's just a matter of reallocating it towards, you know, moral priorities um, away from incarceration. Um, and towards things that will actually help people in our city um, and really encourage you guys to find <coughs> ways to in um, city budget departments that are bloated and don't help people um, and reallocate that money towards rent cancellation, um, eviction protections, um, things that will actually help people um, and keep them safe um, because we're about to get absolutely crushed by those in the coming months and our city has done very little, um, both at the city council and mayoral level. Um, and I think it's really important to have voices coming out of here um, that are really strongly um, pushing for those as budget priorities, um, which are moral priorities. So, thank you. I agree with a lot of what you say. You may want to contact Carol Newman, who is the chair of the People's Budget Los Angeles uh, Committee, because these are issues that we are addressing um, that circulate around what we can and cannot do with the city budget because a lot of the services that I think are essential are actually controlled by the county, the state, and the federal government. And hopefully we will see big changes with the change in Washington at the moment. Um, and Gina, and then we'll move on back to the agenda. Hi, was that me, Gina Viola? Yep, that'll okay. be you. Thank you so much. Um, I wanted to be sure in your budgeting process that you were aware of the Loyola University survey that was recently taken. It was a bipartisan survey, I think of a, almost 3000 residents throughout the city of Los Angeles, uh, including family members of those in law enforcement. And I want to be certain that you understand what those findings were. 62% of the they, they, they actually had a, a seminar that Daniel Perez, who was on the LAPD committee, set up for us. And, um, and that committee is also continuing with that. Uh, Daniel, do you want to say anything at this point? I just ask uh, uh, Julia to contact, or Gina, sorry, to contact. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not interested in interrupting their public comment, no. Thank you so much. I just I just wanted to point out that in this survey that Loyola took, 62% of Los Angeles County residents uh, support redirect of monies from police budget to local programs. So, and, and with the passage of Measure J, you can shake your head, Jack Humphreyville. With the passage of Measure J, the county and the city are giving you marching orders to defund the police and invest in programs that support healthy communities. If we have healthy communities, we need to stop relying on the police to solve problems, all our social problems, that they are not equipped to solve. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, in this Loyola survey, 47% want to defund the police, 36% want to actually dismantle the LAPD. So this is, this is a, a true cry out for something different and something that will serve our communities in a more positive way. The People's Budget LA, surveyed 25,000 people. 
and I understand that you're hesitant to use that survey, so I'm imploring you to at least use this one from Loyola Marymount that shows you the same exact uh, orders. Defund the police and invest in things that promote healthy communities. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, okay, we'll take Kevin and then we, we will definitely move back. Thank you. Um, I'd like to echo what uh, Gina and Joey were saying uh, regarding uh, defunding the police. I wanna also draw attention to the fact that uh, the county doesn't have a say in this, the budget of the Los Angeles Police Department that falls on the city of Los Angeles. So, you know, if we want to invest in actual budget priorities that meet people's material needs, um, we can't be pointing fingers at the county when we turn around and say, oh, here's $3 billion to the LAPD uh, from the Los Angeles City Council. That's, that's unacceptable. Um, I also want to add that uh, yesterday FEMA uh, released its ranking of most dangerous uh, counties for natural disasters in Los Angeles, top the list. We are number one uh, most dangerous place for natural disasters. And as climate uh, breakdown accelerates, we're only going to see wildfires and droughts continue to get worse, not to mention uh, the literal earth shattering earthquake that's going to happen in our lifetimes uh, at, at, at some point. Now, if you look at my background, can you see the emergency management budget? Um, oh. it's, it's, it barely registers on the graph. So I'd like to just point out the fact that LAPD needs to be defunded so we can fund actual priorities that would save lives with the current and future disasters. Um, I yield we're, the rest. We're, we're actually meeting with um, Aram Sarai at the Emergency Management Department on Wednesday um, to address the fact that it is grossly underfunded given the potential danger to all of us in Los Angeles County. So thank you for your point on that. Okay, moving ahead. Um, we'll Liz, Liz, could I respond? I looked up for Jamie Penn's question mm -hmm. about Wilshire Santa Korea Town. Could I just give her the two names? Okay, because the thing is that, are you looking at John de Gregorio's list? I'm looking at Jennifer's. Okay, but that's, let's, let's move on at this point. You can email um, Jamie. I don't have her email. Anyway, Steve Bay and Andy Galen are listed as the two budget reps. They actually have both resigned. So I'm wondering how that plays out. Yeah. Um, yeah, that they're the who we have. They can still be budget reps as stakeholders if the neighborhood council doesn't make any other changes. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Um, okay. Uh, next item is status of outreach to the departments. Um, this is an important matter because, first of all, the mayor requested that we address the departments again and also with the increased uh, concern about the across the board cuts to the departments, including um, emergency management. Um, we need to look in more detail to a number of the departments. Um, Jack and I are gonna put something together in the next few weeks, reach out to a very brief um, um, paper on each. Um, and we would love to have people work with us. Um, we're not having large teams, but sort of, you know, anybody interested in a specific department uh, can reach out to us and we can add you to that call. Um, Jack, do you have anything to say? You're, you're muted. Still move. Um, I'll pass. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, we're going to, you know, I think we'll take in Lee's very good suggestion about asking um, that departments prioritize their key objectives as high priority, necessary, nice but not needed, and can wait 12 to 18 months because we do have a fiscal emergency that we're facing along with everything else. Um, okay, let me go back to that. Um, next is 
uh, state of the city budget, which is draft. You're muted. Okay. Uh, not much has changed from our last meeting. The CAO, when the CAO's uh, second financial status report said we're short $675 million, 600 because of the revenue shortfall and $75 million because of the uh, need to repay uh, the, uh, the, I guess, I forget, public works uh, safety fund money, which was borrowed to um, uh, uh, front load expenses regarding the, vir regarding the virus. Um, I think the next thing is, is we, uh, we also had a little bit of a dispute with the city council uh, versus the CAO where the, the city council did not agree for the uh, layoffs, the level of layoffs suggested by the uh, city administrative officer. So the city council rejected the extra layoffs, which are about a thousand people, but they did not come up with any solution to you know, figure out where they're going to get that $25 million. Now, $25 million seems like a short, you know, not, not a lot of money for a thousand employees, but you've got to remember, or you need to know that that only, that, that cut only applies for three months. And the reason three months is that it's going to take a lot of time to process uh, layoffs and furloughs. Um, the other a aspect that uh, is, is out there is next year's budget. And that's less than, you know, the, the mayor will be proposing his budget on April 20th, which is you know what, uh, February, March, you know, which is in three months, the, the various departments, except for the city council and the, and the mayor's office have submitted budget requests and they're being reviewed at this point in time. But next year's budget before any adjustments or corrections is expected to be, from my calculations, expected to be north of a billion dollars, probably a billion and a quarter. When you figure the revenue shortfalls, the impact of the, uh, unsustainable labor agreements that were entered into in uh, October of 2019 and increased pension contributions. So I think, you know, we have a very difficult situation here that's going to, that's going to get, get very, very nasty. Uh, it's going to require layoffs, furloughs, elimination of core services. Um, it's not going to be very pleasant. That's it. Any questions? Yeah. Okay. I, I'm raising my hand. Okay, John, please wait. I've got a bunch of people ahead of you. Some of them may have um, uh, already spoken. Uh, Austin, please lower your hand if you, uh, unless you want to speak again. Same for Gina, and then uh, Glenn. Um, and next we have uh, Richie. Hi, sorry, I'm late. I was wondering if I give public comment. No. No. Okay. Well, never mind. Um, okay, Camila. Camila. Sorry, there's a uh, siren going by. So these are questions with regard to recommendations that are being made to the uh, budget, correct? What's the question? The the recommendations. Uh, I mean, the 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 questions that we're asking are regarding recommendations being made to uh, for the budget, correct? The, the the CAO came up with a variety of recommendations to close the six hundred seventy five million dollar gap. Um, they essentially, they're going to, uh, hit the reserve fund. Let me get the numbers out here. They're going to hit the reserve fund for about, uh, $260 million. They're going to do some deficit financing, which is pretty scary stuff for about uh, 150 million. Uh, there are going to be some uh, departmental reductions, non layoffs of 103 million. Um, there's going to be some reimbursements from the federal government for COVID related expenses. Uh, but the big, uh, the, 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 and those are all sort of one-time uh, fixes, if you will. The other $100 million uh, is basically going to be labor savings, whether they're uh, actually concessions, labor concessions would be, which be furloughs, deferral of pay, things along those lines. And then there's the issue of layoffs. 
And I think I addressed the, the issue of layoffs as, as, it, as it went to the police department and the view of the city council. Other departments that are going to get uh, dinged on, pay, on, on, uh, on, on um, layoffs are the city attorney's office, animal services, and the Bureau of Engineering. Got it. So uh, the question I had was back in June when the the budget was last being discussed, when it came uh, time to talk to some of these departments, especially like the emergency management department, uh, the point that they were making to city council was that a a dollar of cuts now only saves about six cents to 25 cents and B with the cuts that they're already dealing with, they were working 18 to 20 hour days. Uh, and that was back in June. The, the crisis is much more more worse now uh, for that department. And um, one of the points made was that a dollar a dollar of uh, police department cuts now saves more later and is more effective now. So uh, I was just wondering how, how much can we uh, press and express that point when we were talking about budget recommendations or anything the CAO comes with. Uh, these departments, when they go to the city council, they they themselves express how the, saving, the, the savings that the council tries to make in those departments aren't as effective as any cuts that would be made to uh, the LAPD. Well, I, I you know, uh, I'm not exactly sure what you're saying, but each, you know, every, every department is going to have, you know, it's going to come up there and say that, you know, we really need all, we can't take the cuts. We can't do this. We can't do that. And, you know, and that people are basically going to have to make some decisions. Um, I think, you know, for example, you know, we just had a little bit of a disagreement between the mayor and the city council with regards to the allocation of $88.8 million, uh, which is part of the $150 million that was reallocated from the police department for, uh, for, for lack of a better word, community benefits. And the uh, you had a third of the council districts, uh, five districts, get 75% of the money because of their most need. Uh, the mayor vetoed that. Uh, the, the projects, the 132 projects that were identified by the city council were mostly infrastructure projects, uh, you know, fix the streets, sidewalks, alleys, parks, left-hand turn lanes, uh, speed pumps, uh, parks. Uh, I mean, There's a whole bunch of basic infrastructure quality of life stuff, whereas the mayor sort of was a little bit more on, on, on big ideas, whether it's a guarantee, uh, minimum incomes or uh, reimagining the police department uh, as well as a number of other issues so we'll, we'll see what they uh, where they come out with marquise Har harris dawson uh, the councilman from the eighth district uh, called garcetti's memo uh progressive the gloppity gluck so with that we'll, uh, we'll we'll see how that one works out thank you uh whoever is listed as black lives matter Hi, yes, uh, this is Edgar Rosa. You know, I, I just, I, I think that I need to spend, you know, my two minutes just saying that I believe that the $150 million that has been proposed to be redirected from the police department is just astronomically low and inappropriate. You know, you say that we need to fill this deficit of $250 uh, you know, million dollars that needs to be reallocated or found from elsewhere. Um, but we have a police budget that is continually exploding and 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 growing, um, you know, year to year. And it took, you know, a historic, uh, actually the the most historic, uh, you know, political action in history uh, to convince Eric Garcetti that he needed to redirect a simple 150 million dollars. Uh, so I I mean there 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 right there right there is is your money. Uh, if you need $650 million, take it from the police. We need to defund the police. It has been statistically shown over the last 10, 15, 20, 30, and 40 years that the police have been overfunded, that they have been militarized, and we need to take money from them. We are over an over-policed state, and it is absolutely and horrifically uh, an example of how uh, the BIPOC people in L.A. County in California, in this nation, and in the world, will be uh, continually abused uh, and and satirized uh, from from the national level all the way down to our neighborhood councils, and uh, and so I really don't think that this is an issue. Uh, I think that you're you're you are asking. You've laid out 
you know, hey, it's it 250 million. You've got 250 uh, million of that that you can already grab from somewhere else. So really, all we need to take, all we need to take from uh, from the police is a simple 450 additional million dollars. It, it does not seem like this is something that really needs to be much of an argument uh, or much of a conversation. You know, I think that with the combined support of the people on this uh, on the Zoom call, uh, you guys can make that happen. And you know, I'm just curious to see, you know, what uh, what what is what is holding that back. Uh, you know, I'm curious. Uh, uh, what that is, you know, layoffs from the police department, ah, you know, it doesn't sound like the worst decision, you know, I'm all for figuring out and reimagining community policing. I think that there are definitely ways that we can do that, but we need to lay off police officers to do that. We need to lay off existing police so that we can have the money available to do that reimagining. I think your two minutes is up. Thank you. Jack, do you want to address that? No. Okay. Uh, John Lieberman. I have problems with a lot of what we're talking about because we are not we are ignoring the fact that the city attorney's office, excuse me, the CAO's office has been behind the curve in figuring out the amount of revenues that are lost. And unless you can get an accurate projection of what money is not going to go into the city because it's been lost due to this pandemic and economic crisis, you can't make any realistic decisions as to where you want to allocate the money that's remaining. And I think we need to get serious about asking the CAO to make more frequent and more accurate projections as to what the revenue stream is. Thank you, John. Uh, Glenn? Yes, all I wanted to say for those who are not familiar with this process that City Council goes through with the financial status reports every quarter that Jack was mentioning, um, it's an imperfect process, but that, that's just that is what we're dealing with. But I want to make sure since it's not on the agenda and I will ask going forward if it will, if you could please put the council file number on the agenda, but I wanted to share it with everyone so that they could look up the financial status report and what these recommendations are for these layoffs and cutbacks um, go, that are you know, being considered until the next one comes out. So the council file number is 20-0600-S as in SAM 84, 20-0600-S84. It's on the council file management system. You can look up the report there. Thank you. Okay, um, Aaron? Yeah, hi. Uh, it's Arun. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I'm actually on the um, a newly minted member of the um, the WCKNC, um, and so I, I just had a couple of questions. Like, so, so where where are these proposed um, cut like layoffs? Uh, which departments are they coming from? Like, wh who who would be the recipients of like? getting fired at this time? Um, basically what the CAO proposed was about seven, a total of oh, almost 1900 uh, layoffs uh, of which, uh, let's see, uh, about 1700 were the police department that includes 950 officers and 728 civilian employees. I believe it's 180, 143 for the, um, uh, city attorneys, I think it's 28 for the Bureau Bureau of um, uh, of Engineering, and I forget the uh, la I, I forget how much Animal Services is. I want to say it's 27. Hmm. Okay. No, it's 45 in Animal Services and 27 in the Bureau of Engineering. Um, where is the and but the majority is coming from from police officers or yeah, it's, it's the police there's uh, the cao recommended 1894 of which 951 were cops and the 728 were civilian employees uh the civilian to fill the civilian employees will also take will require a number of officers to fill will fill their positions so you know the number of you know cops on the street if you will will be you know significantly less than than that, significantly more or less than <laughs> than the 951 
The city did not agree to that. The city council did not agree to it. And I think so that that represents about a thousand, uh, a difference of a thousand, a thousand people in the department. Um, and are they, you know, proposing to lay off people from just government jobs that are, you know, fundamental, just clerk work? Or, or is this, um, the, I, I understand the majority come from the police department. A majority of them are police officers, but um, I'm just curious how, what, what portion of these jobs are like government paid? Um, all just government to, paid. I mean, no, 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 no. I, I, I meant like government paid, like sort of desk jobs, you know, that people are kind of relying on at the moment. Well, I think they're going to, I don't have it right handy. They're going to cut a bunch of different, you know, uh, issues. I think like uh, human trafficking, they're going to human trafficking, bridge home, alcohol sales, air, tra air you know, traffic controls, cannabis enforcement. I think they're going to take a hit. No, no, no. I, I mean, not from the police department from other departments i can't i can't I, I mentioned the other three departments i don't know exactly who, who in gotcha. I think asking oh. all departments to cut across the board so it's something yeah and, and and i'll say this is just that this is just for this year's budget which is 675 in the whole and that does not include 128 million dollars of over expenditures that relate primarily for the failure of the city council to implement the furlough programs uh, next year is going to, you know, uh, it's going to be a horror show. And so in uh, three months, we, we will hear what the mayor has to say. But from my perspective, this year and next year are all, all part of the same package. The, the other issue at the moment that will affect services for people across the city is that they have uh, a do not hire policy, which means the people who retire or leave or are sick or whatever are not replaced. And that can be very dangerous and lose gaps. Um, defund the EMF, please. Hi, yeah, no, I just wanted to say, um, you know, after, you know, eight months or so of people all around Los Angeles calling to defund the police and support a people's budget, um, you know, 27,000 people uh, from the last from last time I checked took the People's Budget LA survey, um, and over 90% over of them uh, 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 wanted to defund the police or, or uh, take uh, funding away from the police. And, you know, I understand as um, neighborhood council representatives, you will have some say in advocating for the budget. Obviously, that's why you're here today. Um, and from, you know, from the People's Budget LA survey to the LMU survey they did about defunding the police, um, where you know I think it was like 40% of people wanted to defund the police, over 50% of people wanted to take money away from the police. Um, there, there, there are clear and obvious signs of what Angelinos want. Um, and especially in the time when we're looking at $500 million deficit plus, probably more than that, for the next budget year. Um, and if you look at the budget items, you know, which, which takes up the most? And it's the it's the LAPD with three billion dollars. You know, we FEMA just ranked Los Angeles as the most dangerous city to live in, um, and that's because they're for our emergency. Uh, hey, uh, do you have do you have a question as yes. opposed to uh, you know your comments? Oh yes, uh, I was wondering if um, you know that neighborhood council budget advocates fully disclose any and all conflicts of interest in regards to this. Um, and that we're demanding you guys uh, advocate for a people's budget. I, I don't know of any conflicts of interest uh, as for adv advocating for the people's budget. We already made some, uh, we, we didn't, uh, some of us, uh, made, yeah, we, a number of us did not agree that it was an adequate survey. It's basically, yeah. We cannot advocate for organizations. We can support policies that will move people towards uh, achieving this. But I have to say that having attended a number of neighborhood council meetings over the past four or five months, there are a lot of people asking for more police on the street because they're finding the streets are dangerous. So we have to find a balance between what's going on. Um, well, I wonder if, if you have spoken to 27,000 Angelinos that filled out the People's Budget LA survey or the people, I mean, police don't prevent crime. It's, a, it's an obvious statistics. And I, and I wonder from the people that you're hearing from, 
you know, what, what is their socioeconomic background? Because obviously we're all impacted by the this police. Is from, this is from South Central. This is from the Northeast. This is from the Harbor area. This is across the board. I think that there are arguments on both sides and we are not set up to debate this issue in this meeting. Um, can we move sure. on to Gina, please? Thank you so much. Um, you know, I just want to add that in times, you know, you keep mentioning that rough times are ahead, austerity measures are needed. We have no problem cutting librarians. We have no problem defunding teachers. We have no problem defunding anything else that is actually part of our social safety network. But when it comes to defunding the police, there's just an absolute stopgap on that. And I'd like you to revisit that as a neighborhood council that uh, association that represents the entire city of Los Angeles. It is time for us to think about how we invest in healthy communities. Okay, and how thank we you take, very much. Yeah, thank you. Um, Lee? Lee, go. Hey, sorry about that. Wrong button to push. Uh, Jack, I had a, uh, a question. Is the uh, mayors or departments moving forward towards, and, and thank you, Liz, for uh, acknowledging the idea of prioritizing different projects within the different uh, departments uh, in terms of A through D, A the most critical, can't live without, to A, D, this is nice to have. Have the departments gotten that sort of marching orders? And if I may, Liz, make a suggestion, the last category of the nice to have should be on a two to five year approach because there's no way that we're going to turn around the city budget in a year. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I think Pete Gordon is up next. Uh, is Jack going to answer that question, Liz? I, I didn't know. I, what's the question, uh, Lee? The, the question is, have they gotten new marching orders yet to prioritize individual programs within departments yet? Uh, the answer to that is yes. The CAO put out budget instructions, uh, I think, back in September. The departments have filed their uh, budget request in, in sort of late November. Uh, that's You can access those uh, via the mayor's website. And if you want, I can send you the link. But, you know, the, 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 <laughs> the budget request request. request uh, they total about uh, 11,000 to 12,000 pages. So, uh, you know, a lot of them are forms. Usually if you read the first couple of, you know, first couple, you know, first the, sort of the general summary, you get a pretty good idea what's going on. But yeah, yes, to answer your question, yes, I think the city's looked at it. Uh, I'm not sure that everybody, that it's received the political uh, okay from the city council, the mayor. responsibly are, are they working on the same scale and categorization across all the departments or is one creating a scale for its own thing saying uh you know we're going to rate it on a scale of three points and another one's going to rate it on uh, alphabetical or numerical uh priorities or urgency i think each department's on its own and then that it's reviewed by the cao and they make and they sort of make some decisions and corrections and things along those lines. So for well, that's example, we can't even agree uh, on, a, on a correct grading matrix. I think you're right. Um, Black Lives Matter. Hi, yes. Uh, sorry. Hey, Glenn, uh, would you mind uh, just uh, repeating that um, the the council file number one more time i just want to make sure i get it down really correct i know you said uh two zero dash zero six zero zero just want to make sure i get the rest uh then it's dash s as in sam eight four s is for subfile eight four thank you so much i appreciate it glenn thank you um gary yes thank you liz uh, just to put things in perspective, the 27,000 number, 90% of represents a mere 
six tenths of one percent of a city of four million people. It's uh, hard who, else, who, else, who else has her surveyed that much? Has the city done anything? Has the neighborhood council? The, the People's Budget LA is the only group to put in that work to get that 27,000. The, the petitions that the city and the surveys that the city have done, pathetic numbers compared to that. Yeah. You all could be whoa, 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 whoa. people if you wanted to. So we don't try to come off work. No, no, no. Don't try to disrespect the work of People's Budget LA led by Black Lives Matter LA. Getting 27,000 people in this city, you know, that that is a feat. And Liz. for someone to try to say that, to, 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 to try to minimize that, come on, guys. Let's no, have a serious I, discussion. It's, it's a, agreed. It's a very good point that it needs to be addressed. But the thing is that there are differing opinions. Um, let's go on to Jarrett. Jarrett. Next item, next person. Okay. Excuse me, sorry, I, I thought I unmuted myself. Can you hear me? Yep, go ahead. Yeah, I, I just wanted to, to bring up, you know, there's, <laughs> there was a comment before about, I've been all around the city talking to people and they think we need more police. Well, the budget this last year was as high as it's ever been and crime was going up the whole time. So what, what were the police doing? If they couldn't stop crime from happening, which realistically they can't that's not what police do then how if they couldn't do it with the highest budget ever how are they going to do it with more money they're not we know this so that's a really lame excuse that's all i want to say thank you yield my time thank you jared uh we'll move on to the next item which is the approval of Sorry, I got cut off who's this when he asked another question earlier i was hoping i could still Oh, uh, P. Gordon. Oh, okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. I thought you'd complete. Yeah. No worries. Um, no worries. Uh, but based on some of the early discussion, there, it seems like there's this assumption that uh, um, an increase in police leads to a decrease in crime. And I think, as the last person said, you know, that's not true. Um, you know, it, it's been shown that that's not factually true. And I, I just want to. The question is like. Is that a working assumption in in a lot of the working groups going on here? Because if it is, I think it's something that really needs to be addressed um, in ways that you know, if we're talking about budget priorities and we're talking about budget priorities for safety, um, that investments into that LAPD are not providing that. And then if we want to provide long-term safety, we need to be looking in other areas to make those investments. Um, and so I just want to bring that up and sort of ask that question, like. Because it, it seemed like that might be a working assumption. Um, and I think that's a really dangerous uh, place to, to, to start. Thanks. I, I think that the uh, this, this police department would agree would not agree with that. And I think some of the other studies that have indicated that less cops on the street means more crime. But I think that's something that we need to get, you know, the, the, you know we don't have Of course have the, the police idea. department wouldn't agree with that. The police department is always going to say they're the most valuable workers. Yeah, this is not a debating society, Liz. Yeah, um, uh, KJ, uh, sorry, um, Adriana, Seth, and KJ. Adriana? Uh, yes, thank you. I know that this is of a uh, deep concern for all both sides of the table. Sorry. Adriana, can you speak up, please? Hi, I know that this is of a, a, a very uh, important discussion, and rather than uh, do injustice to all. Can we possibly ask this be agendized for the next meeting? Uh, we can agendize things that have to do with the city's budget. Uh, the I think that there's been a lot of conversation today, which is of importance in terms of uh, safety and in terms of reallocation of the budget. Um, that is more a function of the People's Budget Los Angeles Committee and could be addressed to, um, to Carol Gordon, to, uh, sorry, Carol Newman to uh, uh, be addressed within the committee. Um, we also have some town halls coming up too. Yeah, Seth? Yeah, hi. So I just wanna thank everyone here who has shown up to 
comment about uh, you know the LAPD budget line item. I encourage you to continue attending our meetings and sharing your thoughts. I think despite some of the comments from my colleagues here tonight, uh, just know that you do have allies in your group that, that do align more to your thinking. Um, the comment I wanted to make specifically is, are, you know, city council members are political animals. They strive for survival. They listen to voters, but they are also caught uh, between the voters and organizations who have pockets deep enough to sway votes one way or the other. So if we want to talk about the LAPPL and the LAPD uh, budget line item, the LAPPL, the, the union for the LAPD, is currently undergoing a fundraising campaign that they have stated would help funnel money towards, quote, waging war against political opponents. Well, what political opponents? Someone like Council Member Mike Bonin, who if you go back and read his op-ed in the L LA Times from September, specifically said that him speaking out about the LAPD budget line item resulted in the LEPPL immediately uh, taking out ads against him. Um, so really continue coming to these uh, budget meetings, but if you're not already doing it, please uh, make public comment at city council meetings. The great thing about public comment is it doesn't necessarily need to uh, be attached to a specific agenda item they're talking about that day. So you can speak your mind, uh, call your city council member, submit public comment on pertinent city council files, uh, support council members like Mike Bonin and Kerm Price, who, uh, as far as I can tell, are the two council members who have uh, had the balls to even remotely challenge the LAPPL and the LAPD budget line item. Uh, somebody like Nithya Raman, who was recently elected, uh, I think uh, could be an ally, and just uh, continue to organize. Thank you. Thank you, Seth. KJ? So as I'm listening to, to the commentaries, the, what, com what is sort of coming to my mind, you know, is the fact that we're in a COVID space. And I think that if um, the city uh, can actually make special fund allocations, if you will, for COVID spending, I think the, the context in which some of uh, the ideas of, of uh, reimagining, that's the language that's been used, um, police, but the police budget um, should be advocated from the budget advocate perspective under the lens of COVID. Because I think what uh, this body also needs to be very mindful of is that crimes um, of poverty, particularly during this time, are going to increase. So I think sort of having a conversation about, you know, we're pro-police and we're not pro-police or policing, you know, the, the relationship between policing and the, the outcomes, if you will, in terms of the numbers of crimes being committed is not necessarily the perspective from which this body should be looking at the budget and the problems that we know are going to come over the next 12 to 18 months. I think we have the potential here um, to, to miss an opportunity to actually better inform to the extent that the, the mayor is already willing to divert funding to what he's calling COVID relief. The question becomes, if you're going to make recommendations to, to move line items, other departmental line items, whether it's LAPD or any other department for that matter, to, to things that tend to be um, county services, but the city has been picking it up under the name of COVID, then we have to follow that lead. I hope that makes sense, what I'm saying. Yeah, I'd I'll, I'll, I'll talk to KJ offline because I'd, I'd like to sort of get some further input there. Lane McFadden. Oh, there we go. Sorry, trying to find the unmute button. Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, add some thoughts and. Uh, there's a speaker a few a few people back that made a good point of, um, you know, I, I think we know where a lot of people's uh, hearts are as far as reimagining the police. I think we know how much of the budget they they currently hold and how much political power they they use to keep that money in them. Uh, so I think this board needs to, you know, be transparent as one caller earlier was saying is where where do you fall on that 
because I think what's frustrating is when we hear this stuff about how we hear you and we need to reimagine it and then you push back against solutions, right? So for me, I want to know, do you understand where any of us are coming from and do you understand that police have had the most money of the city budget and crime is only going up and they have only spread COVID and they have, I mean, it, there's a lot of frustration and it just feels like all of these very legitimate voices are being pushed aside, even from people that are saying they're on our side, but then they're saying, for some reason, the police are untouchable. For some reason, they're the one line item that can't be addressed in the same way as every other department in the city. For some reason, they're the ones that are, you know, this on this pedestal that that if they, if if we take a, some money away, the city will fall apart. Meanwhile, the city is falling apart because they have all our money essentially held hostage. Um, so I just I just wanted to get that out there and and just um, I hope this this board will take that into account and just you know be be upfront of what side of the coin you fall on. Thank you. Thank you, Lane. Um, Adriana. I have, I have nothing. I'll... Oh, okay. Um, then Stephanie. Hi, I just wanted to say regarding that council file number. Also, you might want to listen to the audio because it's very interesting. And there were, I believe, a lot of change or some changes to the report. So um, the council file index will should identify all the changes too, but I just wanted to throw that out there. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks, Stephanie. Um, Jason? Oh, thank you. Um, I just wanted to share that the council file uh, S83, the 20-0600-S83 covers the hundred the money coming from the police department. And if you read the report there, it is uh, very informative. So um, I think that it's important to look at the suggestions that are being made. I will echo that there are a lot of people who don't support defunding LAPD necessarily, and they are doing that already. So there's 1,700 LAPD being cut, and that's going to have an impact. And I think the idea of improving policing is a good thing to look at for the budget advocates, because whether it be- oh. Excuse me. Okay. Um, it's, it's a good thing to look at how we're going to still, um, whether it be community policing or volunteer policing or other ways to keep our neighborhoods safe. Um, so, you know, it is happening and it, it may continue to happen, but I think we ought to look at uh, some of the ideas being brought forth. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Arun? Yeah, um, yeah, I know, I know we don't have much um, ability to affect the choice. Um, sorry. Can you unmute yourself? I think I accidentally muted you. Oh, sure. Can you hear me right now? Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so obviously we don't have much ability to control how our laws are enforced, um, what the police officers do. Um, but, you know, they're, they're like specifically very recently, there were these protests of, you know, um, people not wearing masks running through malls um, and, you know, literally spreading COVID right as we're facing, you know, the, the highest numbers, ICU beds, are completely, you know, uh, like like literally, uh, EMT folks are having to decide who dies before they can even drive them to the hospitals. And at the malls, the police officers are just standing around, allowing folks to um, 
you know, spread COVID like wildfire. So, so I, I'm just curious as to like what, you know, allowing, like, like if we are not taking care of our community, um, and in terms of the health of our community first, if we're not prioritizing that, and if instead we're prioritizing a police force that just stands around and chooses to do nothing. Um, I, I, I just think that that is actually, that's insanity. Right. Um, I, so I that's that just, that really isn't what this meeting is about. Um, and I think, um, I think that is actually a good point for you to take up with the city council in terms of uh, instructing the LAPD to act appropriately. Sure. Yeah, but I, I, I don't. I think there's a lot of advocacy in these discussions in terms of the the budgeting and and is I, there a question I, here? I, I, yes, there is sort of a question. Um, the val like what are our values in terms of um neighborhood council members uh, of which I am one to our community and and I believe that. I, I'm requesting, I'm asking you to put the people first um, in terms of the budgeting and for COVID relief. Um, that's that's uh, that's why I'm here. Um, Black Lives Matter, and then we'll move on. Thank you very much. And you know, first I would like to say, Jason and and Liz, I I I, I get that people are saying and that people are on the other side of the issue. And they say that they do want more policing, and 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 that there are people that feel that way. And what I what I what I retort is that we need to be reimagining the police. And my question, as Jack so vehemently reminds us that we need to form our our comments as a question, is: Do you guys not see that the police are an inherently racist organization? They were literally birthed out of slave catchers. So if you do not agree that, that, we, that they are an inherently racist organization, then we are not going to find ourselves at a common ground. But if we can reach that common ground, then we can have a real conversation. I yield the rest of my time. Jack, do you have a response to that? Oh, okay. Moving on uh, to CIS for distribution, we have two up for consideration. One is to support a uh, pension commission as recommended by the LA 2020 commission um, and has been consistently supported by the budget advocates to try and get the costs of, of the city pensions under control. Um, uh, perspective, uh, pension problems have been underlaid most city bankruptcies in this country. And we certainly don't want Los Angeles to be next. Jack, do you want to speak to anything on this? No, I, all, I think what we've seen is over the last several years, over, over many years, that the, the annual required contribution has been growing faster than revenues. And as a result, we, 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 we're constantly seeing the, the growth in the unfunded pension liabilities, which now uh, total about $12 billion if you use a optimistic discount rate um you know with the with and it's a fixed cost so you know this year it's like 20 percent of the general fund i think next year could very very possibly be about 25 percent of the general fund and it's you know the the pension pension payments are unsustainable we're certainly not as bad as chicago or the state of illinois but it's gonna it's gonna be a mounting problem that that needs to be addressed do we have a motion to approve the CIS? Gary yeah. moves. Second. Second. Okay. Anybody opposed? Oh, it's okay. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask if there is a council file associated with this so that the CIS has a place to hang. <laughs> The, the LA the recommendation of the LA 2020 Commission did not did not get a council file um, so we could either file it under the 
under the LA 2020 commission, which was 2014, or we can go to the general budget account, which is 20,600. Okay, thank you. I'd like to move that we modify the motion to go to the 20,600 council file. I agree. Jack, do you have any pro problem with that? No. Okay. Okay. Uh, with the modification that it be attached to the 20600, do we have anybody? Uh, okay, sorry. We've got a few people speaking up. Um, Kay, is that your hand again? Or is. Okay. Um, Jason? Hi. Um, along the lines of the CIS, is there possible to, is there a, a committee or commission? that a request for action letter could go out to because in addition to doing a CIS, you could send a request to action letter to, is there a pension, uh, Glenn would probably know this, is there a pension commission or some kind of city or a, a, not a general manager or is there some? Uh, some I'll let, I'll, uh, Jason, let me ask that. Uh, first of all, there, there are two, the city has two pension funds. Uh, both of which have boards, but they don't make, you know, we could send letters to both of those two commissions, one for the one for the police, police fire and police pension plans, and the other one for LACERS, which is the city employees, civilian employees. The other person to address it to is Paul Koretz, who's head of the personnel uh, committee. Um, he has been, uh, he, he has been, he, 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 he is not a fan of pension reform. He, quite frankly, uh, he wants to, you know, borrow money to pay pay it or not pay pay the annual required pension require, requirement. He wants to increase the discount rate. It's um, uh, he has no clue what's going on. So I, you can you, we could send it to three three areas: uh, Lacers, Fire and Police, and Corets. I, I think there, that's a good idea. There okay. there is there is a, a, com, a pension commission. If you look at your um, when you file community impacts statements yeah. online on the drop down menu you'll see a board listed there and that's a good idea as well yes thank you thank Corrette's, you correct may not agree but that doesn't mean that you know we you i agree should well, push he, for he, it he wants to be the controller hey glenn how do you find that file where's that is that for the board it's you when can, they file you can, i will list i'll send it to you jack okay you can select that commission when you file the cis also, there's a DWP pension board or pension system. Yes, there is, but that's funded completely differently than the two city pension mm -hmm. plans. And Liz, can I trouble you to repeat what the CIS will is will say? Okay, hold on. Let me... It essentially, KJ essentially says we want the city to form a pension commission to review and analyze the pension funds and make recommendations. Got it. Thanks, Jack. No problem. Uh, Jarrett? Yeah, um, I see there's some genuine concern here uh, about the police pension. So I'm wondering if the budget advocates have ever um, suggested to the city that um, lawsuits stemming from LAPD use of excessive force, et cetera, um, be drawn directly from the LAPD pension fund. Seems like that would be a really good way to deter LAPD's <laughs> worst impulses and also decrease the pension liability. Have you guys ever put forth such a recommendation? Thank you. To answer your question, no. Uh, to divert or to take money from the pension plans to pay, uh, let's say, litigation expenses, you know, liabilities, lawsuits and stuff like that. Would end up putting the would end up putting the trustees in jail. Uh, however, that's uh, illegal. However, uh, in discussions with the ethics department, we have discussed the possibility of making the individual departments responsible for general liability claims. So I don't know if where that will go. We'll be meeting with them again later this year. Yeah, uh, just just real quick, the, the answer about it being illegal. Have you ever tried to advocate to the city to make that not illegal so that it can be done? I mean, first, it, first, that would that one would require a charter change in the charter. 
secondly, you probably have to go through some various types of federal litigate federal uh, laws on the federal you know pension rules federal laws that apply to pensions. Would would a recommendation from you guys trigger any of those things? No, it would not. It would just be a recommendation, right? Maybe get the wheels turning. I don't know. Just I saying. Would I would disagree with that. Of I course, you would. It might be more interesting to look at, um, you know, going after the LAPPL funds. So. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Let's do that. Okay, um, P. Gordon, please. Yeah, I was actually just going to ask, is it possible to uh, screen share the text of this CIS? I just wasn't included as an attachment on the agenda. Yeah, I'm just wondering. Uh, if it's possible. Let's see if I can do that. Actually, Glenn, is, since you you have more skill with that, uh, can you put that up? Uh, let me see if I've got it handy. In the meantime, but was um, that asked? Was that asked by a budget? Was that request by a budget advocate or a representative? Or no, just, is there... no, somebody else. Uh, let, let's just have a vote of the budget. Okay, but what I'm saying is, let's move on while yeah. when looking. Um, okay. Yeah, I just want to say that it would be really helpful to include with these. Um, with the, the CIS is where we intend them to go, because if we don't, we're going to have scattershot among different uh, council files and commissions. And uh, if, if we if we send them all to like the same place, it seems like it would be more impactful. So by including it there, it gives the neighborhood councils um, an idea of where they should be putting their attention. Okay. Agreed. Uh, Liz, it says the host has disabled screen share, so I guess you'd have to make me a co-host in order okay. to screen. Um, just for some reason. Oh, it looks like I can do it. Um, if I can figure out where it is. Um, I've got it on my screen. I just can't share. So no, it's it, it, the machine. The system opened up and it had that, and I tried to unconnect it, but it didn't want to do it. Um, can read it. Um, it's less than a hundred words, Liz. What's this? Okay, maybe I'll just read it. I don't know how to get out of this. Oh. Okay, let's look at this. Okay, as recommended by the LA 2020 Commission and the Neighborhood Council Budget Advocates, the XX Neighborhood Council urges the mayor, the city council, and the city and the council's personnel committee to establish an independent pension commission to review and analyze the city's two underfunded pension plans, including other post retirement employee benefits develop protections, projections for future actuarially determined employer contributions and unfunded liability, assuming a range of investments, investment rate assumptions, make recommendations to eliminate the unfunded liability over the next 20, 30 years, and report back to the public within 90 days on its findings. And then there was um, referral to a paragraph from the 2020 white paper which was that unfunded pension liabilities are by far the city's largest liability. While this debt-like 
obligation must be paid by the city. Our elected officials and Angelinos do not understand pensions and the massive liability and its implications. The city has not developed a realistic plan to eliminate this liability. Furthermore, this liability is understated because the reliance on an overly optimistic investment rate of some sort of seven or 40 percent. A pension commission would review and analyze the city's two pension plans and develop recommendations to eliminate the pension and OPEB liabilities at the time. This was recommended by the LA 2020 Commission, but not implemented. Can we vote? I would like to make a motion that we change the John. 20 to 30 year time frame to a 10 to 30 year time frame. If we're not serious about this, why, why vote on it? Okay, um, do we have anybody, any budget advocate opposed to this? Okay. I've lost. Um, anything now? Okay, um, do we have anybody? I'll need people to speak up at the moment. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay, assuming a, um, assume Liz, you're have, asking about this amendment? Big pardon? You're you're asking about this amendment right now. I'm asking about the, the um, about the CIS. Thank you. Um, the second uh, suggested CIS it has to do with Drek and Parks, which, and I'll read it. Uh, the first part of it. The neighbor ex member council su supports the Los Angeles City Council file 19. Dash one 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 nine, if amended, which recommends that the Department of Recreation and Parks be instructed to conduct community stakeholder meetings in each council district with all park users in order to solicit feedback relative to ensuring the city parks are safe, clean, manageable, and accessible to everyone, and that the department report to council with the results of these public meetings and offer recommendations on how to manage the impact of homelessness at all city parks. The neighbor council recommends at very least that the frequency and notice period for the meetings be clarified and that all uh, park users be replaced with available to all, all park users. Uh, Pat, do you wanna to speak to that please? Yeah, thank you. Um, I think that uh, several of us would like to do a little bit of work on this. I think we want to expand it a bit and clarify um, exactly what we're asking for. But the intent of it is um, to really um, make, make the rec and parks accountable to the local communities for things that they are doing to the local parks. And this is going to vary from community to community. For example, in Encino and uh, actually probably Silmar and Lakeview Terrace, we have large parks, um, the Sepulveda Basin and Hanson Dam that are kind of co-owned or, well, they're leased from uh, the Army Corps of Engineers. You know, there's, there's complicated jurisdictional issues and uh, what we have found actually in both cases is the city tends to just do these deals um, and completely shut the community out of any voice in what they're doing. Right now, we've got the 2028 Olympics coming up. There's all, uh, there's all sorts of plans about the Olympics. And, um, you know, we have some old plans when they were bidding on 2024. We don't know what they're planning. So basically, uh, what 
we will be asking for, and I, I think we may need to clarify the wording and come up with a term sheet, but we need a memorandum of understanding between the Department of Recreation and Parks and the neighborhood councils. So there is clarity as to um, impending actions to be taken by the parks. And we realize there are going to be things that rec and parks cannot handle. For example, they are a disaster with handling any of the wild urban interface areas. And um, they need help. They, they need, uh, they, they've got plenty of volunteers that are experts in the area willing to help. Um, they shouldn't make it hard to accept help. Um, right now, for example, uh, Rec and Parks managed to incinerate most of the uh, wildlife area in the Sepulveda Basin last summer. We are working uh, with a group of uh, very diligent people who will get grant funding to pay for this to bring goats in to eliminate uh, the non-native plants which are causing the fires. Rec and Parks is not even responding to requests for uh, a right to entry permit. This is very frustrating, um, especially, uh, you know, with, with limited funding, don't make things hard. If you have citizen groups that want to pay for something, go for it. So I, I think that we need to take this and expand on it a bit. Um, but that is, that is what my intent is with it. I think so basically you're saying you'd like to hold off until next meeting? Yeah, and I would like to get together. I know Jason has some ideas, Glenn has some, and um, we did discuss a couple of the parks before the meeting. So I think we can kind of lay something out. Now, one thing, if we're gonna try to combine this with urban forestry, I think that might be a problem. I can see addressing any uh, forestry issues within parks, but unless I'm mistaken, they're two totally different um, departments. One is street services, one is parks, and um, they, they seem to have different goals and they don't talk to each other. So um, I believe me, I am all for uh, urban forestry and um, you know doing anything to benefit that. But um, I, I think the intent of this is really just to increase the understanding with parks. And this is gonna vary it, for one neighborhood, for one neighborhood council, it may be just a, a couple parks with some grassy area and a couple playgrounds and maybe a community center. For others, you may have 2000 acres of um, mixed use, uh, you know, golf course, uh, wildlife area, um, ecologically sensitive, totally different things. So we need to have uh, community by community representation for that. Thank you, Pat. Um, okay. Jason? So what, why don't we table this and move on to the next item? Because there's, there's four hands up and I'd like to go through them and then we'll move on to the next one. Jason, briefly. Yeah. Um, I want to thank you, Pat, for um, putting this together. I know you've worked very hard on this, and Glenn uh, as well, and we've been on meetings. Um, when I was speaking of urban forestry, I was speaking of something totally aside from this. You know, urban forestry would be Bureau of Street Services, but with respect to this, I just have two comments. Um, I think that we need to be very specific in that second paragraph where you talk about the issues of safety, cleanliness, et cetera. We can be very specific and say the issues of, for example, lack of brush clearance, because I know they don't clear brush unless it's within 200 feet of a structure. Um, the second item could be removal of invasive species, like you mentioned. Um, so I think that if we create some specific line items in there, um, that would be helpful for the neighborhood councils. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Kay. Yeah, um, I, I just have two quick things I want to say. One is this this doesn't um, at all um, address the pork par areas of, 
the pork poor park poor areas of the city um and that's um, a really important thing and i think that if this is going to be a budget advocate some supported cis it has to be framed um as some sort of a budget um you know budget position and i don't think it is point see if you can include that pat um arun Okay. Yeah, sorry. Um, this is actually um, more to the previous point um, for uh, the pensions. Um, can, am, am I able to ask about that? No, don't let okay. him. We, we no. moved, we've sorry. moved on. And we've got a lot to do. So, um, uh, Jared? Don't, I don't understand why you would say don't let me, but thank you. I don't know who said that, so. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I think my hand was up, but uh, yeah, uh, take money from LAPPL. Okay. Um, uh, John Lieberman. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I think we need to recognize the fact that the uh, Department of Rec and Parks is run for the entire city. Although a specific park may be in a given neighborhood council's area, mm -hmm. that park is available to all members of the city and is paid for by all members of the city's taxes. Uh, so where I am in basic agreement with a lot of what Pat wants to do, we need to make sure that it's done in such a way that it allows areas of the city that are park poor to have access to these parks and to have a reasonably equal say as to how the money is going to be expended and into in terms of what's being done. Even though as a member of my neighborhood council, I might like my given park handled in a given way, that may not be the most judicious use of the funds for the city's entire recreation and parks mm -hmm. budget. I understand. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, let's move on. Um, Next is an open item on where can what I um, city savings. What ideas can people suggest today? Um, Lee had suggested last meeting about carrying back staff in the mayor's office and those of some of the council members, um, and revisit that you know when the city gets back on its feet. Um, do other people have any other ideas? Arun. Sorry, that was uh, I, I I I didn't put my hand down. So That's okay, Kevin. Okay. Uh, yeah. So my understanding is uh, you're asking where to cut to save funds. Um, I believe the answer to that question would be to defund the police. Uh, the police are funded over three billion dollars of the unrestricted budget. Uh, they must be defunded if we are to be serious about any of our other policy goals uh, regarding housing, healthcare, emergency services, any of the basic human needs that don't involve uh, weapons of war and brutalizing protesters. So we should defund the police. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer? I would just like to request out of respect for everybody's time, that we make sure that people are only speaking once per agenda item and that the time limits are adhered to. Thank you. Thank you, Kay. Yes, I think the budget advocates should take the position um, uh, in support of the CAO um, in uh, their request to uh, uh, eliminate 900 police officers and however many uh, civilian employees it was. I, I think that's an important position that we can support. Thank you. Uh, Pete Gordon. Yeah, I'd like to uh, echo both uh, Kevin's general sentiment um, and then also Kay's specific recommendation as well. Um, and, you know, I think obviously there's a lot further to go. I mean, you know, even if we roll back um, the LAPD budget to 2016 levels, right? We're looking at probably at least- um, we're, we're doing a quick go around. Thank you for your input, Arun. 
Yep. Uh, yeah, I think um, I, I, I'd like to just say that um, there's. Uh, yeah, I'd like to say that um, there's probably no coincidence that um, pension um, is 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 dwindling. That there are all these budgeting issues. We're facing COVID. Um, I think that people need to reprioritize um, their mindset. Suggestion. Said. Do I have a suggestion? Yes, that's what this oh, is. Oh, of course, yeah. Um, I mean, definitely um, in terms of prioritizing our uh, budgeting, um, yeah, I mean, I, I would advocate for what many folks have said tonight, which is, you know, um, shifting our, as a neighborhood council and alliance, um, we, should focus, we should focus on the people and shift uh, budgeting from the police which is overinflated so, so toward... moving from the police thank you john lieberman i would suggest that uh we look at the city council offices uh funding they're all 15 offices combined into one general topic so you have no transparency as to who's spending what on which funds so i'd like to see that broken down into 15 separate city council uh funding items Okay, by CD. That's good. A good point, Gary. Gary. Okay, skipping Gary for now. Um, Lee. So, Gary, you want to go first? Go ahead, bud. I thought I did. Did you, you, were, you were hear on, me? You were on mute. <laughs> okay. What's I'm, your suggestion, I'm not Gary? Mute here. Okay. The mayor and perhaps the city council had a plan that they have failed to implement with furloughs and uh, uh, numerous cost savings. Uh, all they've done is kick the can around. We need to hold them accountable on the plan that they failed to implement and somehow they need to go back and fix it. Thank you. Um, Lee? Yeah, I got three uh, budget suggestions. First off, uh, implement a uh, ratio to council members and the mayor's salary by however many percentage were in the hole, their salary should be deducted. That's a little bit of a cost savings, but I think it's a, a valid one. The second one would be <clears throat> immediately badge uh, urban forestry uh, inspectors as well as other non-badged city inspectors for enforcement and citation of destruction of the urban forest, particularly street trees. Um, that is absolutely rampant with absolutely no enforcement during holidays or weekends. Uh, the cost to rebuild that stuff is echelons above what we have. And for the folks that were advocating for the defunding of the police, I, I still would love to see what mechanism is going to prevent crime in general that was not in the people's budget. And second, if we were to institute such a thing, it should be voted on by individual neighborhood councils. The ones that vote to defund it, they don't get policing. The ones that vote to have it, they do. And then we'll see in terms of the laboratories of democracy, which piles turn into ashes and which piles turn into gold. Thank you, uh, uh, Jarrett. Yeah. What? <laughs> that last comment sucked so much. Sorry. Um, yeah, defund the police. As we've already said, we've given them all the money they can possibly handle and crime has gone up. They're not any good at their job. They stand around and watch COVID mask. Okay, we, we, we've got to fund the police is one of our things. Black Lives Matter. Uh, I would like to uh, I would like to echo uh, defund the police. Uh, my second one is uh, let's take the rest from a combination of uh, Michael Moore's salary and and hey let you know let's say uh, Jack Humphreyville's salary too. Uh, I think that would be great. Thank you. Okay, uh, 
sorry, that was uh, Glenn. Uh, uh, yes, regarding uh, street sweeping, uh, last year the department uh, proposed uh, expanding be by the, that every every area that has weekly street sweeping doesn't need it. Um, and there are some areas in the city that have zero street sweeping. So uh, so one way of savings is take them up on their acknowledgement that not every street needs to be swept every week. And if that includes uh, dispersing that out to areas that do need it, that are getting no sweeping, but there may be cost savings if you know, if they're, if they just uh, reduce it, um, you know, some streets only need the sweeping you know, dis when the leaves fall, you know, in December from the trees. Okay. And others, yeah. other streets, other streets need it. You know, commercial streets are very dirty every day. KJ? I think that workforce development, um, that department, as it relates to um, some of the, the jobs that they, they fill and as it relates to the, the business loans that they do, I think that is critical um, to keep at full uh, mass if you can, because again, we're, we're in a time where people are losing jobs. And so I think in terms of departments and budgets, we have to keep the department that keeps people working um, as a priority. Uh, I also think that um, as it comes to contracts and whether whatever department you may look at the budget, there are always contracts. And I think that um, one of the things that we've talked about in prior years is siloization and, and things being in silo. So, you know, I don't know, let's say what the office supplies budget might look like in one department from another or if there are vendor differences, but this is a time to actually look at um, the different departments and the contracts that they have um, for certain services and to see if they can be either renegotiated or consolidated in ways that um, wind up being cost savings. Um, I think looking at the, the, the contracts that uh, can be renegotiated or have some sort of clause in them, you know, for natural disasters, I think COVID um, can rank as a natural disaster. And if that means that we get to renegotiate, you know, the, the cost of things, we were willing to pay more under, you know, an economy that wasn't in sort of emergency status, but to the extent that we're in emergency status, you know, maybe we're going to pay you 80 cents on the dollar. I just think things like that are ways that can be um, creatively looked at at this particular point in time. Thank you. I also think that taking things, um, God. addressing the fact that so many people are working remotely at this point, so there should be uh, significant cuts in some of those places. Um, Patty? Oh, fuck, I need 10 minutes. Okay, I'll be again. Yeah, um, well, I'm going to go with defund the police because everyone else has said it, and it's true. Um, but a lot of the suggestions coming up here are really just nickel and dime and maybe 1% of the budget total. Um, but if we're going to nickel and dime, maybe we could spare a few golf courses. Uh, that's an absurd amount of water that's being wasted uh, and natural resources. We could use those to become uh, safe campgrounds. And if we're going to have safe campgrounds, then we can take care of uh, getting rid of some of the sweeps that are unnecessary costs of police use and sanitation, uh, sweeping unhoused residents, evicting them from their places. Um, we could advocate to repeal Prop 13. That would help a lot. Um, so there's some suggestions to get you going. Thanks, Patty. Lee? One of the other major items that we need to look into is uh, changing the street moratorium from one year to at the very least five. Um, most people don't know this, but after the uh, streets go ahead and get repaved, uh, there's one year that you're not allowed to dig into it. Um, and one year is just ridiculous. So essentially you have a brand new street, then utilities come in and all that stuff and then tear it up. And then for the next 29 years, we're driving on a messed up street, uh, which we have to constantly patch and pothole, which is just an endless cycle of throwing money into uh, a money pit. What, Lee? 
to have the city make plans in, in advance. Um, Adriana. Yeah, uh, I'm going to piggyback off of what Glenn said about street sweeping. One of the challenges that I've had time and time again is when a stakeholder requests for something to be done, we have to uh, check with our uh, region um, because that's who controls the calendar, not the Bureau of Street Services, not not that department. They don't have that ability to to be able to say this is where we're, this is where it's needed. If if we could take that away from the from the councilman and give it back to Streets LA, when a stakeholder asks for this to be done through the LA three one one app, it actually can be calendared and looked into, because right now the city council, I mean the city council has it that they, with the, their own uh, persons are in charge, their own departments are in charge, and and we've heard I don't know if you've heard, but time and again several times already at at. Uh, bonk this being an issue that that they're not getting heard that underrepresented communities uh have filth lying in the streets e that are not af associated with homeless encampments unsheltered persons and encampments thank you um jason um one of the things that wasn't mentioned are the franchise fees for example with the gas company and with the uh waste management department and um, they did an audit, the controller did an audit and found that, you know, the, the overall idea is we're not getting full cost recovery um, or we're not getting um, positive cash flow from these arrangements. And that's really the problem. And it, it, I'll echo on the tree issue. It's the same thing with the tree issue. The tree removal permits are so cheap and they don't reflect the full um, economic benefit of the tree. And that's, that's a big problem. And so, you know, the developers are getting away with murder because they can, you know, rip out these trees and just pay a very small fee. So if they raise those fees, um, you know, that's really the approach. And then my last point is more of a mitigation to this, which would be um, to make it easier for neighborhood councils to get things done within the city that will help to mitigate some of the impacts. Um, you know, they have budgets and they have money that they haven't been able to spend throughout the year because of COVID that could be allocated towards offsetting the reduce in services. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Peter and then John, and we're moving on. Can you hear me? Yep. Thank you. Okay. Our elected officials have been very adept at uh, failing to do a good job and implement our savings. We're halfway through our fiscal year. There's been massive cuts to our city departments, public That's services. That's suggestion, Gary. Yes, I was just going to say it. Uh, therefore, I call upon uh, equal cuts uh, as all the departments have averaged to all elected officials to their salaries. Thank you. Um, Peter? Hi, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'd, I'd just like to point out that it seems like this entire conversation centers around cuts and austerity um, and really implore us to look more at, you know, I mean, we're in the middle of a pandemic which has very unequally hit people, right? Some people can't afford rent. And the state of California is going to have an $11 billion surplus because some people have made a ton of money. Um, so while we're sitting here sort of nickel and diming all the programs that we care about, why are we not asking the city to look at ways of new revenue generation? Why are we not looking at parcel transfer taxes? That, that why are we not looking at ways to we are looking all that at money that people... This, this particular item and, is on cuts. Uh, moving on, uh, John Lee. And I, what I'm saying is... An austerity, an austerity mindset is going to lead to a lack of investment in the future of this city. And if that's the approach that is taken, it is going to fail us now and it's going to fail us in the future. We Thank are you. also asking for new revenue streams. This particular item on the agenda is about suggestions for cuts. John, and then we're uh, going to Never mind. Uh, I'm on the other side, revenue stream. I'll catch you later. Okay. Um, 
budget advocate town halls. Um, Julie's not here. I spoke to her this afternoon based on a meeting they had prior to the holiday. She reached out to several members of the city's budget and finance committee about speaking at a town hall. Only one person got back to her and was not in the middle. So she's now reaching out to other people, journalists, politicians, people who actually know about the city budget, who could talk about some aspect of the crisis. Um, plan now is to get a speaker or two and set a date and subject based on their availability first and their interests and then publicize it. Um, the scope now is to reach out to budget advocates and then to budget rep reps first. Um, those who've already shown some interest in the issue, anybody um, on this call who uh, is not in that group can contact us. We'll be posting it. Um, and then um, reaching out to further into the communities with the hope of having, of having four or five of these from February, end of February through June with one specifically to look at the mayor's budget after it's released and another looking at the version that goes to city council for approval. Um, and then uh, I was also to remind people about the Northwestwood event, which Kay already did, thank you. Um, and the CISs will be posted shortly on the website. Going to uh, people speaking, Jarrett. Did you want to speak on this item, Jarrett? Okay, Adriana, did you want to speak on this item? Sorry about that. I forgot to lower my hand. Okay, <laughs> I do it all the time myself. Uh, no, ma'am. Okay, lower the hand. Uh, Peter, same thing. Okay, Glenn. Um, I just want to clarify. So we, you know, we had planned in the fall to do something about um, equity. Uh, for budgeting, and we had postponed that till January, Feb you know, February timeframe. Is that not going to be the subject of the first town hall? The intent is at this point is to fold equity into each of the town halls moving forward, but not to have a town hall specifically on equity since it's been addressed in a number of other venues. And so that's being considered as the speakers are being recruited? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Um, uh, outreach presentation VMCs um, is next up for Julia, who is not here. Um, Jennifer, do you have anything to say on the budget rep and neighborhood council contacts? I'm focused more on getting lists together of all NC board members for all of the regions. Heavy lifting, but thank you very much. Um, the uh, furthermore is we, with the lack of budget advocates in some of the regions, um, we need people to uh, step forward to cover some of those NCs. Um, and I think that we're actually doing that offline. So I'll skip that one unless you have any additional information. Jennifer? No. Okay. Um, status of replacement of the budget advocates who stepped down. Carol? Uh, well, we sent out an email for the first region that we're going to be holding elections in. It's region one. Uh, we have a couple of people possibly who may want to step up for those two openings. So I'm following up on that. I sent them emails today. Uh, the next region that we're going to be targeting is region 11. Um, uh, so John Lieberman, it would really help. I mean, I, I've got lists of people as best I could come up with it, uh, you know, who are currently active in that region, but we don't know if the lists are current. Uh, perhaps Carol, I could say, yes. Would it help if I sent out a letter to all of the neighborhood councils asking them to we either confirm that. their budget reps or to nominate new ones if there is an interest in not, running? Not not really at this point. What I can do tomorrow is before I send out, the, uh, the next email I'm ready to send out is to Region 11. Why don't I send you a list of who I have? Uh, and if you can just respond yes, no, or that person has been replaced or whatever, that would help right now. Will do. Uh, but I, don't, I don't think we have the time to wait really to, to solicit the neighborhood councils right now. 
So, so Region 11 will be the next one. Just to be and, clear, we're talking about one vacancy that we know of at the moment, right? Yes, there's one vacancy. Okay. Um, and then uh, probably the next one we'll deal with is Region 12. We have one opening there. So we have openings currently in Region 1. That's two openings. Uh, four, Region 4, that's one opening. Region 7, one opening. Region 9, one opening. Region 11, one opening. And Region 12, one opening. We're seeking to um, fill all those openings in the next month to six weeks. So anybody, if, you, if anybody on this uh, Zoom meeting knows people in those regions who would be willing to serve as budget advocates, let's discuss it. If those people are not currently budget reps, there might be a way we can get them appointed as budget reps, possibly. Uh, but in any event, we're trying to fill all those openings right now. Thank you, Carol. Uh, anything on the bylaws? I haven't had a chance to look at the bylaws. When I'm done with elections, then I can go to the bylaws. Great. If thank somebody you. else, uh, well, let me just say, if somebody else wants to step up as like a co-chair of bylaws, you know, maybe we could proceed uh, uh, simultaneously. But but right now, I'm really focused on the elections. Thank you, Carol. Uh, Jared, did you have something to address? Uh, I, I did. I'm sorry that he went through that list of openings so, so quickly. Could, could you possibly repeat that? Sure. We have two openings in Region 1, which is the Northeast Valley. Uh, we have uh, one opening in Region 4, which is the Southeast Valley. Uh, one opening in Region 7, which is like near downtown Silver Lake, that area. Uh, one opening in Region 9, which is one of the South LA regions. Uh, one opening in Region 11, which is uh, West LA, Bel Air, that area. Um, and one opening in Region 12, which is the Harbor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jared. Um, and I think, I'm not sure if anybody has renamed themselves. Um, Person uh, Ricci had a public comment. If he's still here, we'd let take some time now to hear it. Okay. Um, any new business? Okay. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everybody for their civility. It's been long and um, a meeting with disparate interests and concerns. I think we all want to work together to make the city better. Um, and it's a question of fine tuning the approach. And we do appreciate everybody's input and concern. Do, we, do I have a motion to address? Uh, Liz, could I just make one comment? Yep. To, uh, I, you know, we've got, you know, Jack, who's our like our one man army, if you will, uh, going covering the budget and finance committee of city council. But uh, if anyone here is not currently tied into that, um, that is where where the lifting is done as far as the decisions made, you know, generally carries the day in city council. So they meet on Mondays in the afternoon. Uh, you can subscribe to get their agendas. But I, since we have a lot of interested folks here, just want to make sure that if they're not already uh, tied into budget and finance committee that they uh, check that out. Thank you. Liz, I'd like to make a motion we adjourn, but before I do so, I'd like to thank the co two co-chairs for their grace in handling this meeting. <laughs> Not sure how graceful I am, but um, I try. And I strongly support the an improvement to the LAPD the actions. Um, but I think it needs to be surgical rather than across the board. And I do appreciate the input of everybody here. Um, and we have a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Unless there's a second, we're all going to have to carry on to, till the end of this evening. Who's the second on the motion to adjourn? I'm assuming it's you, Glenn. Okay. Uh, Howard will. <laughs> okay. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Um, Glenn and Ooh. Glenn and um, Elspeth 
can... Defund the police, please. Good night, all. Improve their services. Yeah. Let's work together as a team, not argue. Thank you. No oh, thanks. Okay, bye everyone. Good night, everyone. Uh, okay, that was so Jennifer. Night, happy New Year. Hi, Jamie. So Elspeth, I didn't, um, if anyone came in like substantially late, I didn't note, note any times. Um, I know some people came in during roll call and to me that's not, you know, that's not really late, that's during roll call. But um, just keep that in mind as we go through the list, please. Okay, yeah, I didn't, yeah. And, and I like the idea that somebody brought up at length about having a way of tracking that in and out. I mean, it would make life easier. It certainly would, wouldn't it? <laughs> Especially when we get to um, um, Well, with so many people on, it's hard to, to keep track of, it's even harder. Like it's already hard, but it was even harder tonight to keep track of who came and went. Well, yeah, when it goes beyond 25, you know, you, you don't have the gallery, the gallery view goes on to a second screen. So that makes it more difficult, but, um, but it can be done. Yep. So uh, region one, I have Lanira as being absent. Or actually, Elspeth, I guess it's better that you, since you're doing the official list, that you speak and I'll listen. Okay. Um, yep, I have Region 1, I have Lenaira absent. Region 4, I have Brandon excused. Um, region 5, I have Julia excused. Region 6, I have er uh, Ernesto absent. I just saw him, didn't I? Did you? Maybe not. Uh, Elias was there. And Edmund showed up later. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah. Um, but just to continue in order, um, Region 6, I also have um, Maggie and Mark. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also have uh, Naira absent and Margarita absent. Region seven. I have Barbara excused. Um, oh. Um, region eight. I have Jamie. I wrote down the time somewhere else. Oh, uh, seven twenty-three. I didn't have that, so okay, thanks. Okay. Um, I have Clint absent in Region 8. Um, then Region 10. Oh, yeah. Um, Edmund Warren, I have him at 709. Um, then Region 11, I have Jay excused. Right. I'm sorry, Region 10. I'm sorry, Hugo. Uh, oh, excuse me. Yeah, Hugo absent. Okay. Um, region 11, Jay excused. And John Lieberman, 707. Region okay. 12, I have Danielle absent. And Gina excused. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Thank you. That's what I have. You said that matches? Yeah. Okay, good. I didn't have Jamie, but um, I believe you. <laughs> yeah. so she, she showed up um, 
Well, I also just heard somebody say hi to her. I just didn't notice. Like I said, we had three Jamies on the phone at various points. So, oh, geez. Yeah. So she was she Jamie T. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, She usually puts that. Okay. Thankfully. So um, Liz, I know you're really busy running the meeting, but um, you know, if you could do a co-host because things like Jamie T, I'd list her on attendees rather than as the, that was my, oversight but if i had had the last name added on a rename i unfortunately I when i tried it. to give you co-host um totally disappeared everything that i could do it, it took me about 20 minutes to get back where i could even look at participants so, okay i'm just i'm just saying i noticed i just noticed there was no co-host to help you tonight and um the, yeah. the other problem, yeah. the other risk is that if you should have um, internet um, issues, then the whole meeting is lost. And if you have a co-host, then right. then it's kept alive. So just I'm, I'm telling you from an unfortunate neighbor council experience that happened to me once. Um, no, I, when when that happened, I thought about maybe I should just reboot, and I'm going, oops, that wouldn't work. <laughs> so that's yeah. a good point. Um, because yeah, I think I, in the past you've you've made Jack a co-host. Jack has been a co-host. You have been a co-host. Jennifer, uh, Julie has been a co-host. Yeah. Quite often so, I use Julia, but she's um, she's out for Mondays at the moment. Yeah. Anyway, there were a few times where um, yeah, I like done, like the the help, renaming could have done and et cetera. I, so. I couldn't I couldn't add you for some reason. I I don't know why. Um, next time I, I get that weird error message at the beginning, I'll I'll reboot immediately before the meeting. Okay. And I'm not asking to be it, but mainly you should have a co-host, if nothing else, just to save the meeting in case you get kicked off. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, so even if it's somebody, you know, even if Jack and he doesn't do anything at all on it, then at least you've... You know. Well, when we started, Jack and I did absolutely nothing and you and whoever else was doing everything. So. Right. Okay. Anyway, just a few thoughts. Good night. Um, Thank good night. you. Thanks, Elsa. Appreciate Thank it. You. Uh, Jennifer, one of the things that Carol is looking for, and I'm I'm not asking you to put more on your plate because I know you've got a ton of stuff, but um, if you'll notice note on region one where I found that there was a board at distribution list, I added it to the spreadsheet, and that's helpful to Carol because then she's able to um, uh, use that. Um, easier than like the whole list of now obviously if you provide with the list of the all board of uh, all the individual names that's fine but of course that's um, a snapshot in time it changes whereas the board at distribution list theoretically the neighborhood councils are updating that on a regular basis so you know going forward i think that's going to be a, a valuable tool and i was able to get it for most of the neighborhood councils not all but most so um, i'm going to continue doing that and I, but I just wanted to alert you to that as well. Okay. So Glenn, those are those are the ones that the neighborhood councils have put together, not Empower LA. I mean, with correct, with one exception, there's one neighborhood council that um, opted to use the uh, public to publicly uh, publicly um, uh, disclose or or publicize that they're using Empower LA. Okay. In yeah, other words, it would. It, definitely have a list of those distribution lists, um, you know, for general use for outreach and the elections and stuff. So if you're working on that list, that's amazing. And would be no, there. I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm putting it into the the regional spreadsheets that you you created. Oh, okay. Um, I forget exactly where, but it's self evident where yeah. it lists the name of the neighborhood council. Um, so you'll see that, you know, if you look at region one, you'll see that. Okay. okay. Um, so. Yeah, I'm not going to the individual NC websites. I'm just going through the Empower LA website and getting a list of all of the individual members. And I mean, it is kind of soul crushing because elections are coming up um, and people are gonna change. Um, well, that that's why having these distribution lists, I think, is going to be helpful. Yeah. So. 
Um, okay. For, for, for what it's worth, Arroyo Seco is, is the board at ASNC.us. Okay. I'll try and remember to add that next time I'm on. I, I sort of had an ad hoc list that I had started compiling about a year ago, yeah. um, but it's not in any order whatsoever. So um, this is sort of focusing it. So, uh, and I'm sure others will be able to add to it. Maybe as as we maybe can loop in the the budget advocates for each of the regions. Say, hey, can you see if there's a board at for you know this neighborhood council, this neighborhood council? We don't have these couple. Maybe they could they could help us out there. Some do, some don't. I know that um, Highland Park basically it was through the Empower LA um, one, and and it was one that was very early on cut off because somebody spam, said it was spam. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna. Thank you. I'm going to sign Thank off. Thank you very much, Gwen. Um, anything, anybody else? Okay. I'll make you all go away. And thank you again for. Uh, Liz, Liz yeah. can you forward an email I just sent you to Carol? I don't have her email. Sure. Thank um, you. Either way, all of us are on the Budget Advocate website. Okay. So for future reference. But yeah, I, I just. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Good night, Glenn. Good night, Adriana. See you, Jennifer. Bye.